This is a new toy for testing an antennas, an um, impedance analyzer. And I saw this on uh, Andreas Spice's uh, channel. Um, excellent review that he did of it. I've been playing around, this is a GSM antenna. And I've also been using recently uh, LoRa antennas. So this is 865 megs. Also FPV equipment for, uh, for my quad and uh, 2.4 gigahertz um, for various other projects that I'm that I'm doing. So this tester is going to prove in, invaluable for that and it uses SMA connectors. So let's just take a look at that. Now the SMA standard specifies that the female uh, has an outside thread and obviously uh, a socket in an inner pin so that's SMA and that's fine but we also encounter what's called reverse polarized SMA now this is prevalent especially on on routers and we can see here hopefully we can see here that unlike the SMA the reverse although it has an outside thread as an inner pin and similarly the equivalent antenna um, as an inside thread um, but a socket so that screws onto there what is the problem with this arrangement uh, all I need to know is whether I have SMA or reverse polarized SMA and order the antennas um, to, to suit well that doesn't always work out um, in my excitement to to test my new toy, I just grabbed an antenna and screwed it on. I was surprised then to find that there was a completely flat line. There was no no signal, no graph being displayed for the antenna. Now, obviously, the problem is that this is SMA and this is reverse polarized. So it's a socket and a socket, and that is not going to work. Okay, people have been known to bodge this by putting a piece of copper wire in the center but that's not really the, the the way to go for me trying to test this antenna on my impedance analyzer okay that was no no big deal but um, what, what would happen if I put the wrong antenna on my quad I would probably pass a, a close range test uh, because there will be some coupling even though it's two sockets there'll be some coupling there so it may work until you fly away and then encounter a loss of control. So for a quadcopter that's traveling at some speed or a fixed wing aircraft, this could ruin your day. A little bit of history now for you. Why is this called an SMA connector anyway? Well, it stands for subminiature type A. Now, if this is subminiature, what came before it? Well, consider this, or indeed this. <laughs> so what we have here, um, just after the earliest days of radio in the 30s, um, frequencies used were getting higher and higher, and they developed this uh, connector, which is known as a PL259 or 258 socket and, uh, and the plug part. And these were known as also as UHF connectors. They're only good up to about um, 100 megahertz, um, but they were the thing back in those days and uh, you can see that it's a, it's a, it's a sizable lump um, that's an adapter obviously to, to BNC and then later on uh, during the 40s and uh, proliferated during the Second World War was this guy again a, a sizable difference and this is uh, what's known as the type N connector now these are good up to around about 10 gigahertz uh, but as you can see again it's uh, it's a bit chunky so these guys were developed um, in the in the 60s I think um, as a as an alternative these are good up to 18 uh, gigahertz and uh, just before we leave this little section um, another note uh, it's advisable um, sorry metric uh, 
metric friends of mine look away now. Uh, the outside flats on here are in fact 5 sixteenths. Uh, so you need uh, an imperial uh, spanner, wrench, to, and it's a good idea just to nip that up. And uh, a nip in this particular case is between 3 and 5 pound feet. How are you going to work that one out? I know not, so I just call it a nip. Just tight enough that it doesn't easily uh, come, uh, come adrift. The nice thing about standards is that you have so many to choose from. A quote there from uh, Mr. Tanem Worm, and uh, it's never been truer than it is today. Uh, this Frankenstein's monster is an N-type to SMA, and we've got all this history here. Obviously, if we want to test this antenna on my new uh, device, this is reverse polarized, so it's a socket, and so is this. This is a standard SMA. What we need is an adapter. So this little guy is SMA at both ends, so it will go into the reverse SMA there, and being SMA and this being a female, I think we can sort our genders out, and we're, we're good to go. Wait a moment. If there are both female and male SMA and reverse polarized SMA, how many connectors are we going to need? Well, to cover all eventualities, fortunately you can buy an entire kit of these guys where you have a combination of anything that you can think of. So there's an, an SMA to SMA. And again here, this one is reverse SMA at this end and SMA at that end. So no matter what uh, combination of uh, antennas or devices you find, there is an adapter that you can you can use at a push to to get you by. So if I want to use that on my on my transmitter, um, I will need an adapter. Similarly, if you're into testing homebrew antennas, they're going to be for various purposes, and we need to be able to adapt that. So there's a solution to, to that little problem. And whilst you're at it, you may as well consider um, if you've got any other test equipment um, with, say, BNC connectors on it, you can also get a range of BNC to SMA uh, connections as, as well. And that will get you out of your predicament.